our services delivery model is um, similar to your any other product, uh, kind of a subscription. The customer will subscribe to Tamnoon, select the package, and will be set with the platform. Um, the differentiator for us is that with the platform, you're also getting this white glove service of the cloud pros whenever you need. Hi, this is your host, Sapil Bhartia, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About AI. And today we have with us Marina Sigal, CEO and co-founder of Tamnoon. Marina, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure to host you here today. And since you are co-founder of the company, I would love to know a bit about the history, the story of the company, uh, when it was created, what problem you saw in the market that you felt no one else is solving or addressing that you wanted to address. So let's get into that. So the history goes back into when me and my co-founders worked together in one of the pioneers of the cloud security posture management space. Uh, we all are coming from Dom9 security that got acquired by Checkpoint. And the CSPM space evolved into CNAP space. And this is a, a very large market in, this, in the cloud security these days that is growing at a fascinating speed. Um, and we, we were really passionate about the problem space of cloud security in general. And by coming out of the CNAP space, which is mostly focused on detection, we knew that the next challenge will be in the remediation space. And um, that was the problem that we decided to tackle um, in Tamnoon. So Tamnoon is focused on how do we solve this uh, challenge of remediating security, cloud security issues um, in a safe manner and in a very effective and precise way. If you look at security and Especially if you look at cloud security, how different is it from traditional IT security? Uh, because uh, traditional word security was someone else's problem. It was also an afterthought. Thought there was also different silos. Uh, cloud seemed to be like a magical place that if you move to the cloud, all your problems will magically disappear, which is not the case. How security is different from traditional mindset? And does it pose more challenges or it makes things easier for uh, developers or operators? Cloud is much more dynamic and fast and, and things that are, um, that are running in the cloud have uh, a magnitude of, of the impact and, and the speed that we've seen before in the on-prem prem environments and even in hybrid environments. And because of this, the challenges are, uh, the, the security is the same, kind of have similar concepts, but the challenges are different. Nowadays, what we need to focus on is on how to solve problems at scale without breaking anything that is running and changing so fast. Um, and the lack of expertise in the field is not helping uh, because the cloud evolved so fast and we couldn't uh, train as many people um, at the same time pace as our technologies has been developing and security usually comes um, after the, the technology that has been developed. So um, with all of that, the expertise problem, the resources problem, the dynamic nature of the cloud, it's just uh, much more significant and, and high uh, velocity problem to solve. Uh, you talked about you know, shortage of people and everything. I also want to look at it from two different aspects. One is uh, technology and one is people or culture. In cloud, what is dominant? From what I heard is that technology is the easy part. People is the challenging part where you have to bring in those cultural changes. It seems like you you, you kind of touched upon that. Technology is, is the thing that we know how to build. We are solving it. We are developing it. They biggest challenge with any technology, it doesn't matter if it's cloud or enterprise software or whatever technology we bring into the uh, enterprises, it's the people and the process side that is getting um, problematic uh, because you need to find the right people, you need to train the people, and you need to make sure that the process is aligned with the technology that you are bringing in. And that's exactly the core problem where um, that Tamnoon is coming uh, to tackle with 
a, a newer approach to the cloud security. Who do you think is responsible for security in cloud? Is it developers? Is it you know operators? Is it DevOps? It is CISOs? It is CEOs? And to also understand that which team are you targeting? Great question. Um, there are different uh, pieces of security, and each team will be responsible for uh, for for their own part of the process. And uh, in in together, uh, all of those pieces they are kind of a part of the puzzle that we are putting together to to solve for security in the cloud. Um, so while security is coming with more of an overseeing function of a function that provides the tool sets, the governance, the the definitions of how to secure and what needs to be secured. The execution is on the developers and the DevOps teams uh, typically. And the the biggest challenge is how to make them work together in collaboration and in a very effective way so that each one of those teams knows what they are responsible for and, and how to make uh, the other team successful uh, through the collaboration. And that's where we are lacking. And that's where the major gaps in security um, are, um, we are that, that we are seeing these days. Um, so while we understand it on paper, uh, creating tool sets and creating the processes and, and making those teams collaborate is a very challenging task. Now let's look at your solutions. Because once again, uh, when it comes to cloud, Cloud is complex. The complexity is not going to go away, especially if you look at you know cloud native where you're building things yourself. Um, that complexity is not going to go away. We have to deal with it. And then you bring in security that adds another layer of complexity. But you cannot compromise with security just because things are complicated. So talk a bit about how do you make it easier for teams, lower the barrier of entry so they don't have to, number one, compromise with the security, two, is that the teams can focus on building business application, which is their real bread and butter, versus getting too much overwhelmed with all these things, which are important, but that should not be their job. Absolutely. Um, so when we're looking at the security space, uh, there are two parts of any um, kind of a security problem. One, pr- one thing that you need to do is to detect what, you, what security issue you have, and the other side of it is how do you fix it? Right. So when you found the problem, the next step is actually the most challenging part of it is who's going to solve it, how they're going to solve it and actually how they are going to do it without interrupting work in production environment and without um, putting too much time outside of the daily jobs. Um, and, and what we are seeing is that this process is requiring approach that is not only the technology and not only um, manual, it needs some combination of both worlds. We need a very scalable and strong technology to support the process, but we still need human involvement in order to make the decisions that are very complex uh, to happen. And that's why uh, with Noon's approach by taking a tech-enabled managed service that is driven by AI and powered by cloud-native technologies, we are solving this problem uh, in a new and in dis- disruptive way uh, while providing the managed services component, but still providing the right technology to support it. Um, and in this way, what we are finding that um, when we are providing a recommendation to the customer or a task that they need to focus on, this task already comes with the entire analysis of what will get broken if you're going to fix this problem. Uh, how to make the developers be comfortable with uh, running the automation um, and ensure that nothing else that they are building is going to get impacted. So that's the fundamental piece where security nowadays needs to um, not only care about the security, but also care about what the production impact of those security changes that you're bringing in will cause and how to deal with it on a daily basis. Now, let's also talk about the company. You folks, you know, announced, you know, seed funding and came out of stealth. Uh, Talk a bit about funding. Uh, 
let's also look at the areas. Of course, the company is new, so you will be growing in different parts. But what are the areas that you are going to focus on for, let's say, next one year? So our company is um, is new, but we already have paying customers and we're already delivering the service and, and the technology to um, large and significant deployments in, in the cloud. Um, our focus in the next year would be um, two pieces. One is the services delivery side. How do we deliver the service um, to the, those customers that is enabled and empowered by technology? Uh, what are those methodologies and, and the, the steps that we are taking with the customers to make them satisfied with every interaction that should supposed to bring the value um, for, for the minutes they spent with us? Um, and the other part is obviously the technology. Our um, AI-powered platform has a lot of different capabilities, and each one of those capabilities is, is a whole separate roadmap. So our focus in, in the next year would be to provide AI capabilities for at remediation purposes in the cloud and make sure that our remediation playbooks and, and uh, technology is allowing customers to query and ask the questions and get the right answers uh, from from the platform as well as uh, from our cloud pros who are um, constantly contributing to the process. Can you also talk a bit about the leadership within the team? Absolutely. Uh, so we uh, recently uh, hired two executives who are joining our team from um, many years of experience in, in security. So one of them is Ran Nehmias, who is joining us as our CBO. Um, he is um, a veteran in, in uh, cloud and security, and um, we worked together back in the days uh, during the checkpoint times. Um, Ran is bringing um, the expertise in how to scale operations and go to market functions. Um, from different startups as well as um, um, through different acquisitions that he went through. Um, another executive that is uh, one of the key hires is Yoni Leibovich, Jonathan Leibovich. Uh, he is uh, coming from, um, again, cloud security background in solution architecture from Checkpoint and other companies in, in, in several startups. Um, he, He's uh, focused on building the team, building the practice of services delivery in. Um, he's located on the East Coast where we are planning to um, um, establish our uh, remediation center for, uh, for, the, for the noon. Now, when we are talking about making things easier for uh, teams, can you also talk about when you look at Tam Noon, um, are we, what kind of, you know, offering are we looking at do you offer software do you offer SaaS? do you offer you know so so just give us an overview of your offerings the innovation that Tamroon brings to the managed services delivery process is um the technology um our services delivery model is um similar to your any other product uh, kind of a subscription the customer will subscribe to Tamroon select the package and will be set with the platform um the differentiator for us is that with the platform, you're also getting this white glove service of the cloud pros whenever you need them. So basically, you will get the playbooks, you will get the uh, prioritization and all of the goodies that you get from the technology. Um, and the, and in the si at the same time, you are getting um, a cloud pro expert that knows your environment really well and allowing you to expand your team I will get you more resources um, handy to you at uh, whenever you need them. Let's talk about you know something which is the hottest topic these days: generative AI, GPT. What role do you see generative AI is going to play in cloud security space? And let's look at it from two different lenses. One is security for generative AI, and second is generative AI for security. Security for generative AI, um, I don't see any difference uh, between security for serverless or security for containers or security for um, 
any other types of new um, deployment models that we've seen in the past. So there will be definitely a set of uh, controls and, and, and innovations and also products and technologies that we will develop to secure generative AI. Um, there is a nuance to generative AI where we talk about privacy, but I will put it aside. Um, um, but security-wise, I don't see a lot of differences. The main difference probably will have will, will be coming from the privacy and, and uh, those types of regulations. Um, and when we are talking about generative AI uh, for security, that's definitely a, a very fascinating uh, piece of technology and, and, and progress that we are seeing that will allow us to um, execute faster. I'm, I'm so uh, happy that we are getting these types of technologies these days because I think um, with the scale of the cloud and with the, the high velocity, having um, such a huge amount of help that you can get for investigation capabilities, for um, understanding the risks, for even creating the remediation options um, with the technology, it can be a huge jumpstart for the entire industry um, and, and the maturity levels of the technologies that we provide today. Um, so I think... Definitely, um, a lot of those tasks that we were doing manually for uh, SOC and for GRC functions, for, for different functions in security, can be offloaded to technologies and, and we will be able to involve humans um, in the places where we actually need uh, a more specific approach. And for Tamnoon, it's amazing because nowadays uh, we will be able to do uh, what we were planning to do much faster. How mature do you think generative AI uh, is at this point? Uh, I mean, of course, it's very, very early phase, but I talked to a lot of companies, especially in the security space, and they are already putting generative AI to use. From from your perspective, from Tenman's perspective, how mature do you think it is, or you are still going to wait for a while for it to... And here we are talking about generative AI for security, not the other way around. It's not mature, and that's why we need humans to oversee and have a concierge on top of it. You cannot just let... Um, same as we are not seeing Tesla or self-driving cars ra- uh, driving around without driver, we still cannot let AI or generative AI models to run on their own. Um, definitely will uh, be in the phase of uh, teaching and and uh, maturing those tools, uh, I believe, for a couple of years. I don't think that we will be um, anytime soon at the place where we can just replace uh, SOC analysts with a generative AI model just because of the impact that it can cause and the risk levels um, that potentially can uh, increase by just letting uh, machines drive it all on their own. I just had another discussion with a uh, new AI company just like two hours ago. And the thing is that sometimes there is a, I mean, it depends on what kind of oil you are on that, hey, generative AI, AI is going to take all our job, replace us with, 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 you know, bots and robots. But the reality is that uh, the good example that I gave is of Photoshop. Photoshop did not eliminate the jobs of photographers. It actually enabled not only those photographers to focus more time on high-level thing, get more clients, and also enable a lot of the folks to get into the business versus earlier the same thing. With the AI also, uh, I was talking to Stack Overflow CEO a few days ago, and he was like, what the trend we are seeing is that it frees a lot of developers' time in all those mundane tasks, so they can they can go up higher in the ladder versus, you know, so salaries, salaries go up, quality of code will go up. So so when you are saying, you know, that when you look analysts, so should analysts worry that AI, generative AI is going to take their jobs away or you're like, no, it will just, you know, empower them. It will be just like a tool. I think we would see a much higher quality in, in the detection rates and in false positive, less false positive rates. And we will definitely uh, be able to reduce the amount of resources uh, deficit in the industry, but we will not be able to solve it all. Also, we would see a new jobs coming out um, that are, um, a, a, as a result of generative AI, you probably will need to have new skill sets and be able to be more of an operator 
rather than uh, an analyst. So you would have this companion of uh, AI doing everything for you, but you will need to be able to ask the right question. So um, we will not be able to eliminate humans. We may be able to eliminate the amount of risk that we never got to look at uh, before. Marina, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about the company. And I would love to chat with you folks again because I can see there are a lot of things in the pipeline. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for, so much for having me.